Hi there. Imagine whatever you have going on is now completely gone. What would that feel like? Imagine. It's a done deal. Whatever you have going on is on its way out for sure. Done deal. Feel what your body and emotions and mind would feel like if it were completely gone. Pure health flowing through every cell, every aspect of your emotions, through every brain cell and thought. What would it feel like? And make the sound of that feeling now. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Hi there. Welcome to the final presentation of our Sound and Emotions Conference. I'm David Gibson, and my presentation now is <clears throat> on multiple techniques you can use to be at peace no matter what the challenge 
and conflict you might have going on in your life. And then no emotions get in, <clears throat> right? Now, also we're going to be going through different levels of ascension and higher consciousness in relation to emotions. Let's begin here. <clears throat> so, I do a whole class that I call Holding Frequency in the Midst of Challenges and Conflict. And if you buy the full package for the conference, you get that class and where we go into this in detail. So I'm just going to kind of give you a bit of an overview here so you can have some <clears throat> techniques to be able to deal with challenges and conflicts. We have a lot of different challenges and conflicts, <clears throat> and that would be health, wealth, and relationships. Those cover most of it right there, right? There's also world ch changes and like wars, <laughs> I mean viruses, people arguing over, over um, uh, <clears throat> um, vaccines, catastrophes, economic collapse, politics, pole shifts, and there's also noise and loud sounds that people have problems with. So <clears throat> think about all the different challenges and conflicts you have in your life. Again, most of them fall under health, wealth, and relationship. And write them down, if you like. Just put a little note as to the list. You may not have time to go through the full list, <clears throat> but you can work on this later. Then we're going to go through multiple techniques. Now choose one of your challenges and conflicts and let's feel it completely. Go back and feel that energy of that challenge. And then make the sound of it just any sound that matches that energy. It's like, <clears throat> that sound is not good for you. Again, that sound over time will kill you. It is not good for your heart, not good for your nervous system, not good for any part of your body it will actually break it down and cause disease over time. Seriously, right? So the whole trick when it comes to dealing with these <coughs> sounds is to, and challenges, is to create a stable, consistent vibration separate than the chaotic vibration. You're going to use your will going to use your voice, going to use your intention to actually create a stable vibration. Instead of just receiving, you're going to make your own vibration, right? So <clears throat> it's tricky sometimes, but it's not that hard, really. When you get And when you practice it, you can get it down really easily. And a lot of you already do it already, right? Just creating your own stable vibration so that these other chaotic vibrations and emotions do not actually affect you. There's actually two steps or two types of, of techniques that we're going to do. One is to make the stable, consistent sound separate from the actual issue. And the second that we're going to, uh, the second half of the techniques are to actually bring this stable, consistent sound to the issue. So you're not like creating your own little cave. Uh, you are actually meeting it with a stable, consistent vibration. Okay, so we're going to have two different types of techniques here. So <clears throat> normally what we do is we play these really horrible icky sounds that represent your emotions 
in the class. Uh, we're not going to do that. We might demonstrate it a bit, but we're not going to do that today. If you want the full-on experience, again, you can get the full class as well by joining the, the uh, upgrading in the conference. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> and when you're listening to edgy sounds, you know, it's tricky. And we're going to do a little bit. So, you know, if you're just multitasking while watching this, it could be a little annoying occasionally. Okay, okay. let's go through the techniques now. <clears throat> the first technique is allowing, letting it be. If you think of the sound of allowing, often I think of it as just silence, right? But you could do a sound of allowing like, right? So allowing is really letting it be. There's a guy named Hal Dwoskin. He actually talks about uh, this number. This is his main te uh, technique that he teaches. And it's from the Sedona method. And it's just, can you let it be? Can you allow it to be? No resistance. The definition of suffering is resistance. Right? <clears throat> and I thought, if we're allowing something to be where we're not making judgment, what is it? Well, it's either a frequency or a combination of frequencies, or it's a relationship between two frequencies, a musical interval, or it's actually a musical flow or not flow. It is what it is. It's like looking at the river and going, that sucks that that rock's in the middle. <laughs> no, it's just a river, right? It's just flowing or not flowing, right? It's just whatever frequency it is. The problem comes when we make a judgment. And if you judge something as good or bad, you're in trouble. The second you make something bad, either you're going to be suffering while you're around it or because you want to get away from it. Until you get away from it, it's going to be a problem. If you make something or label something good, you're in trouble because then you now commonly have fear of losing it and actually feel bad if it goes away, right? It's base, basic Buddhism, right? Non-attachment. We don't care if it's what it is. It is what it is, right? So that's the first step is allowing. And so you can ask yourself, with your issue, can you allow it to be what it is? with no stress. Okay. The second technique is being present in your body. Now this means for me, it often means grounding. And what, what, the way I do grounding is I feel gravity <coughs> pulling me to the center of the earth. Feel gravity in your body now. All right. The earth is pulling us to the center all the time. The other is a deep breath. A deep breath in at whatever tempo is good for you. In and out. Right? Commonly when I'm in a challenging situation, I will start start breathing deeply. I learned this from my yoga class, right? Long time ago. Right? The next one is to be present in the moment. We talked about this last time, being the witness or in the first presentation, being a witness where you're just watching it. You're perfectly still watching it. You are a point of awareness that never wobbles, that never, never has any emotions, right? So these are all very good to actually breathe. So try this. Ground yourself. Do a deep breath. And be present in the moment. And I'm going to make a sound that's a little annoying and see how it works. Okay. Keep breathing. Present in the moment, grounding to the earth. <laughs> this can be a very good one. You're creating a stable, consistent, low frequency because the frequency of the breath is less than one cycle per second. It's actually a frequency and then grounding to the energy of the earth <clears throat> and being in that stable, consistent vibration of your point of awareness. Okay. 
Toning is really effective. If you simply do any vowel, you're creating a stable, consistent vibration. You could use instruments, but any vowel, it's easy. It's free. No, no, no cost, right? And it's so simple. Ooh, or ah, uh, or ee, any vowel, right? Often I do this when I'm around uh, uh, problems, or and if I'm around noise, I'll start toning. Uh, it can be really helpful. I learned this when I was uh, actually getting out of the shower years ago, and I fell on the side of the tub and I broke a rib. And I just screamed. And I noticed that when I was screaming, there was no pain. And <clears throat> I screamed for three hours until I got tired. And by then, the pain was much less. I also noticed that when I was in the hospital, that whenever they would poke me with something, I would scream, right? Especially when they pulled the tape off the IV. I would just scream, and there would be no pain, and the pain would go away very quickly. So that was very cool. But the nurses said, you're freaking the people out down the hallway. They think somebody's dying in here. And the doctor, I, I told the doctor this, and he says, you know why? And he said, what? And he says, because when you fill up the nerve endings with sound, there's no more room for the information of the pain. Because the nerve endings can only handle, handle one type of information. I'm like, oh, cool. So I realized you don't have to scream. You can just tone any vowel. This can get rid of, uh, overcome pain. It can also overcome any issue and get you back to a stable, consistent vibration where you have more capacity to deal with the situation. It's very cool, right? Okay. So toning. But sometimes you can't really do toning out loud. I found that if I'm in an argument with someone and I do toning, that they will actually, it actually makes it worse, right? So I don't really recommend that to tone in somebody's face, right? However, you can actually do toning silently. I just okay. Everybody, try this. Do a really loud vowel in your head silently. Om, like om or ah or u. Right? Okay. This can be really cool. Okay. Let's go back for a second and do a test here. Okay. Let's do the loud, the vowels out loud. Do it out loud. Okay. Everybody do a vowel, if you can, as loud as possible. Ooh. Now keep it going. Keep it going. And I'm going to make an annoying sound. Keep it going. Ah! If you're atoning, You'll notice it probably didn't affect you at all. Now try it silently. Do a really loud ohm in your head silently. <laughs> What's cool is toning silently takes zero energy. If you, you know, when I was in the hospital, I couldn't tone more than five seconds. Right? If you got chronic pain, you can't tone for hours, right? But toning silently, you can totally do. It's really effective. And it totally creates that stable, consistent vibration which overcomes the chaotic vibration. Right. Okay. Now, next one is chants, mantra, or singing. You know, instead of just doing a vowel, you could do, you could sing a song. You could do twinkle, twinkle, <laughs> you know, anything. Right? But mantras bring in higher energy. Right? I've got here the one from the Hathors, which is El Ka Lim Om. El Ka Lim Om. You could do Om Mani Padma Hum. You could do any chant or mantra or any song you, you, you know. Just sing it in your head. And this will totally overcome the chaotic vibration around you. It's creating consistency, which is the definition of peace. Right? That's very cool. Okay. Then, once you know your soul note, you could just go to that. You could tone it. Mine is oh. But again, you could just go to the energy of your soul. That energy, which is really stable. Again, I believe your soul never wobbles. 
It's the rest of you might be shaking in its boots, but your soul's just going, what you up to now? <laughs> okay, so tune into that energy energy of your soul and make any note that feels good. It's really cool. Okay? I like that one a lot because I know my soul note. Right? Okay, so the, all of those techniques were about creating a vibration separate from the actual chaotic vibration from your challenge and your conflict it can be really effective and you can still be present while in your stable vibration with what's around you right so it's not like you're totally building a cave or a fortress around yourself you can sit sometimes these five techniques will make you really present so you can actually deal with that challenge much better and not hide Right. Now, the next one, so we're going to actually bring a sound to the challenge. We're going to meet the sound with a, a challenge. This next one is sing along with it. This is especially effective when you have an annoying sound. <clears throat> Say you have a jackhammer. It's like right? Or you got a skill saw or a chainsaw. It's fun to try to match the frequency of these annoying sounds. Or a motorcycle going by, right? Or a siren. You could even do a woo woo woo, woo woo woo, and sing along with the siren. It's also nice to send a prayer to where that siren might be going. Oh, that's really cool. So, Singing along with an annoying sound. I know uh, one of the students, he said there was some dogs next door barking. And he just imagined them going, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and they could imagine barking back, right? Hey, hey there, hey. Right? So the trick is to make that annoying sound your friend, right? Again, the resistance is in the suffering. I'm sorry. I got backwards. The suffering is in the resistance. The suffering is in the resistance. Totally. That's where, I mean, there are monks that are really in a lot of pain in caves meditating for years. And there's no suffering because they're present and they're not fighting it, right? Whereas other people, they have pain or issues, and it's like, this sucks. This sucks. Like, i got to get away from it. Oh, God, I'm going to die if I don't get away from it. No. You're going to die if you fight it. <laughs> That's the deal. Okay. So sing along with it. Okay. So I'm going to make a sound and just get silly and sing along with my annoying sound. Okay. <laughs> So it'd be kind of like, <laughs> so now you start laughing instead of going, I'm going to die if I can't get away from this. Because you've made it your friend, you're singing along with it. Very cool technique. Okay. Next one is to welcome it. We're not saying bring it on. We're saying once it's here, welcome. All right? We're definitely not saying bring it on. Welcome once you're here. You're already here. Come on in. All right? We're not going to fight it. We're not going to resist and create that, that chaotic vibration of resistance in my body. We're going to say, okay, welcome. This is really cool. This one, when I do this, it totally takes away all the stress of any situation. Welcome it. What, what's the sound of welcoming when someone comes to your door? Right? It's a really sweet sound, right? The whole trick is to create a sweet sound in your system instead of Go away. I'm going to die if you don't leave. Totally. You're hurting yourself when you resist it. Right? Welcome it. 
Very similar to welcoming is gratitude. This is actually a hard one for a lot of people. In fact, I find it really hard to be grateful for someone that's hurting me in the moment. For a situation while I'm in it, I don't, I'm not very likely to go, thank you for being a jerk <laughs> or thank you for, for being mean, right? Or thank you for this catastrophe. I don't normally go, and most people find it hard. You can, at the highest level of consciousness, you can be grateful because you can be grateful for anything. In fact, there was this study that was actually done at um, a major university and they found, they studied people that had gone through trauma and how they had grown from it. They got an increased appreciation of life, warmer relations with others, a recognition of new possibilities for one's life, a greater sense of personal strength and spiritual development, increased compassion for others, especially for others going through the same thing you went through. Right? Increased capacity for forgiveness and humility. Increased desire to understand things. A deeper understanding of the ambiguous nature of things. Becoming more aware of the limitations of our knowledge. In most cases, when survivors lose home and possession, they acquire a profound, life-changing realization of what truly matters. Most express prolific gratitude for their survival and make a concerted effort to make better use of their remaining lives. Even in the books by Carlos Castaneda, he talks about death as your ally because it makes you see what's really important, right? Any challenge makes you see what's really important in your life. Survivors help one another, express previously unexpressed love for friends, family, and strangers. Relationships are the main thing that become important. Loss brings new appreciation and new understanding. So you get to the point where, <clears throat> look, I can be grateful for any challenge. Thank you. In fact, a lot of people say the whole thing is <clears throat> the challenges are what we use to grow. And in fact, we really need these challenges to get to a higher level of consciousness and <clears throat> even peace, right? And then also you learn how to deal with them. Any, any challenge you have, even if you blow it, <laughs> the next time around, you know you didn't die and you have a little more information on what to do, what to try. Well, that didn't work. Okay, I know I'm not going to do that again. Maybe I'll try this, right? So it's always a little better and you can always find gratitude for any issue. The Dalai Lama talks about if someone hurts you, they're hurting yourself. They're, they are hurting themselves. They're creating karma for themselves. And they're also giving you an opportunity to practice compassion. You don't learn compassion by studying it. You learn it by actually practicing it. So they are sacrificing their self for you. They are hurting themselves so you can practice compassion. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty cool when you get to that level. The truth is there are no negatives. It's all a process of enlightenment and transformation. And once you get to that level, there's no stress around it. Still got to deal with it. Take some time. You know, deal with it and maybe have to deal with their negative emotions, right? But it's still, there's no stress around it because you realize this is what I'm here for, right? It's really helping me to deal with this, right? Very cool. That's the highest level. It takes a little work, right? It's not always easy. I found where I can be grateful for situations soon after, right? But in the moment, it's still a little tricky. Okay. Now, I've got a video you can check out at some point called The Sound of Gratitude, where we tone the energy of gratitude. And uh, I go through all the different aspects of gratitude, everything, everything you can be grateful for. Actually, there's one I left out I can share right now. Uh, you know, I've never, ever been hungry a single day of my life. 
except when I didn't get back from a hike or I was fasting, right? Never, ever been hungry a single day of my life. And there are millions of people completely starving right now, dying. If you ever want to think of one thing to be grateful for, that one right there is a really big one. Right? There's so many others in this video. Just do a search for the sound of gratitude. Right? Then there's compassion. Compassion is a deep energy. A lot of people don't know how to do compassion, though. And they know it's cool, but they don't know really how to actually bring up compassion in the midst of a challenge or a conflict. There's a, I studied compassion because I put together a, a, a Cirque du Soleil style play called Compassion, and I studied a good amount. There, there's a book called The Compassionate Life by the Dalai Lama that I learned a lot with. And first thing that I, I, I do is I think, what caused them to do what they have done? Well, the answer is always the entrainment into the craziness of our society for tens of thousands of years. The greed, the selfishness, people are often starving or stressed out, right? It's nobody's fault. Maybe there's a higher being up there pulling strings somewhere, right? We could get upset with him. But for people, it's nobody's fault, right? Of course, people have options, but, you know, entrainment is a very strong force. I mean, it's the norm to be mean sometimes. It's, I mean, it's the norm to not be kind, right? It's like, it's, it's so rampant. We get entrained into that energy. So it's nobody's fault. That works really well for me. Another one is to see them as a baby. Imagine them as a beautiful, brand new baby. Uh, I think of like, like Trump as a beautiful baby or as uh, Hitler as this beautiful baby. Really cool. And then you can have compassion because we are all spirits. A little messed up beings, but we're spirits at the core. And that spirit is a perfect, <laughs> beautiful energy. Okay, also you realize if you're going to get upset or angry at someone doing something bad to you, so to speak, I always like to say so to speak, well, you're just hurting yourself. Now you're running that 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 chaotic energy through your body. You're, you're just hurting yourself. I saw a really cool quote. Uh, oh, I think I already talked about it. Yeah, it's like you're doing anger is like, oh, I remember it now. Doing anger is like uh, taking poison and thinking it's going to help. <laughs> it's a famous quote, actually. I didn't get it exactly right, but it's close. Okay. The main thing the Dalai Lama to talks about and the, the ultimate is to realize we are all one. We are all one. For most people, that's pretty hard to do, though. The Dalai Lama has a technique where you imagine or you, you just realize they, are, they don't want suffering just like me. They want happiness just like me. They're just like me. And then you see we are the same. And then you have compassion. Really, when we, when we, we feel it all the time, though. If someone dies, if anyone around you dies, if you see someone die, it affects us deeply, right? Or someone gets hurt or starving. I mean, it used to be as, you know, I mean, if it weren't for so many homeless, we would have compassion, right? I mean, and it's, it's like we've gotten desensitized to it. Right. But the truth is, when you really tune in to that person is really suffering, everybody feels it. Right. Because everybody it's it's like built in. I saw this accident uh, years ago and I just started bawling. Right. This guy like looked like he got killed. I didn't know who he was. It's built in. We're all got compassion built in when we see suffering. If it weren't for TV and movies and stuff where we get desensitized. That's the ultimate trick is see that we're all one. All right. Now, there's a story I came across, actually heard on NPR when I was 
working on my play, there's a, a story of these one, two guys, one from Israel and one from Palestine. And both of them had had their entire families killed, wife and kids. And they got together and went to schools throughout Israel and Palestine and were doing workshops where they said, if anybody has reason for anger and revenge, it is us. Our families are gone. And they said, the only answer is forgiveness and compassion, or there will be many others suffering like us. Oh my God, right? Your kids are killed and your wife, your whole family's killed and you're seriously running compassion? Oh my God, Christ never had it that bad, right? I mean, that's unbelievable. What an inspiring mentor. What an inspiring, you know, way to be. That's just so beautiful. Otherwise, other people will be hurting also. The Dalai Lama also is a good example because, you know, I mean, Tibet's gone. He can't even go to Tibet, right? I heard an interview where they said to the, to him, you know, if there was a soldier who killed like hundreds of Tibetans sitting here, what would you say to him? And he says, I would hold him for all of the pain that he's feeling. It's like, whoa, right? It's a deep energy. It's the energy of Kuan Yin, right? Let's make the sound of compassion and think of all of your challenges and conflicts that you listed earlier. And let's bring compassion to those challenges and conflicts. Do the sound with me of compassion. Send it to wherever it needs to go and to yourself as well. Stable, consistent vibration is the whole deal where you're at peace instead of <clears throat> in the challenge and conflict. The next one is love. Love's easy, actually. I find love really easy, much easier than gratitude and compassion because you don't have to have a reason. Just send it, right? <clears throat> so let's send love to everybody that's suffering on the planet with emotions. That would include yourself. Let's send love to your own heart again. And then the ultimate, send love to source and listen for the universal love coming back into your heart. This is really cool. Even sending love silently to your challenges and conflicts is really cool. I actually had a situation with a policeman and he was like, I said, well, let me tell you what's going on. And he said, shut up. I'm like, well, but no, you need to know what's going on. He says, no, shut up. I said, but what? And he says, I'm taking you to jail if you don't shut up. I'm like, okay, I'll be quiet now. So I just sent him love. And I swear to Buddha, within a minute, he turned to me and goes, oh, how can I help you? really? Me sending love turned you around? Very cool. Bringing a stable, consistent vibration to 
the challenge or conflict. Right. Right. The last one is oneness. It's a little tricky for a lot of people to go to a place where you're all one, right? Like we we're talking about with compassion, but that's the ultimate. It's really just tuning in to all and realizing we are all part of a larger being, right? And then looking for that light of spirit in each person, right? Where you are the same. We are all We are all trying to be happy and all don't want suffering. We're all exactly alike. We all have a soul and we're all part of source. When you go there, there are no challenges. It's all perfect, right? There's, there's no challenge. It's just like another situation. And there is zero stress behind it. Again, you're not saying bring it on. Nope, nope, nope. You're just saying, okay. It's all perfect. Thank you. Bring compassion, love, and it's all in the plan. It's all part of the plan. Thank you. All right. So, Notice which one of these techniques work the best for you. Again, different techniques work for different challenges sometimes. Go through your list and see which one works the best for you. And use it. Remember, it's all about creating a stable, consistent vibration instead of a chaotic vibration in your being. And we're talking physically mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, right? Stable, consistent at all levels so that you are not on that roller coaster of the challenge or conflict or the roller coaster of any of your emotions, right? Feel it and shift it if need be, if it's just your own emotions, but try any of these for your emotions or for whatever you feel is ca causing it. Right. Now, you can use this in relationships. You're ready now. You, know, you can use it in relationships. I actually have done this with a previous partner where we each uh, told each other, <laughs> this is intense, the worst thing you could ever come up with. And I had no idea my partner would be so good. So I practiced. I like held compassion and then went to love while she was like telling, telling me the most horrible things to try to trigger me. And I, I did pretty good. And then I asked her to do the same. And she, was, she had taken the class. So she did it. And uh, after about five minutes, she started bawling. And I said, what's going on? She said, I saw where you stabbed me in a past life. Holy moly, I wasn't expecting that. So we processed that the rest of the day, right? This is really cool. After we did these exercises for months, there's nothing she could have done that was would have up, upset me, right? It's very cool. But also, if you're working with people with PTSD or trauma, you know, you say, what is it that triggers you? The sound of bombs? And one guy told me the sound of babies crying or gunshots, right? Well, let's do this technique and practice and see which one of these, these techniques actually works the best for you, right? Go through it, take time and slowly, you know, get them so they got it down and, you know, use annoying sounds and, and have them practice and then go, okay. Let's play the sound of a bomb. Which one are you going to use? Gratitude, compassion, love, just toning. What works for you the best? Play it, we'll play it softly. We don't want to re-trigger the trauma. And move very slowly until they completely overcome any triggers. 
This is huge. This is really huge. Now you're at peace instead of on the emotional roller coaster. I okay. This is different techniques for being at peace in the midst of a challenge. Now let's switch over to the aspect of <clears throat> higher consciousness in relation to emotions. Okay. A lot of this information comes from the teachings of Alice Bailey, who is a woman who channeled this ascended master named Dijua Kuo back in the 1930s. And she's got a lot of books, and they're quite amazing. They just talk about, you know, uh, different um, initiations that, that people go through into higher consciousness. Um, so a lot of that comes from this, although the first level, level one of going into higher consciousness doesn't come from Alice Bailey. This is the most important. And this is feel your emotions. If you're, again, if you're not feeling your emotions, you are dead, right? And it's interesting. There seems to be two main things that stop people from feeling their emotions. Trauma. Can't handle it. Right? And business. I'm busy. I'm busy making money. I'm really good at it. I'm efficient at making money. I work really hard. But you're not feeling. You're in your head all the time. No, oh, I'm fine. Right? Isn't it funny to put trauma and business in the same, same box? Right? Again, if you're not feeling your emotions... Tons of people in this conference have been talking about all the different ways to express yourself with your voice, right? It's very cool. This is so important. And to teach kids to do it from the beginning, to express themselves instead of, uh, actually, instead of be quiet and, uh, what's, what's the line? Be quiet, not heard. I mean, yeah. No talking back. Right? It's horrible. You're shutting down that entire emotional being, which goes to every level, physically, mentally, and even spiritually. Okay? So you got to feel your emotions. The next level is to watch your emotions instead of being on the roller coaster. As we talked about, instead of being the emotion, you step back and you watch them. You're the witness. You are, are a, identify with something that is stable and consistent, whether that's your soul, your spirit, source energy, universal love, your point of awareness, that witness that's watching. All of those are stable, consistent vibrations where you're watching them instead of actually being in them, right? That's that is the first initiation from Alice Bailey, actually. The next level is if you, if they get in, go through all the techniques we did yesterday of releasing the emotions with the voice. Transform it. Make the sound of them. Transform them. Form them. You know, make the, the uh, sound that the part of the body that's holding it, right? Have higher beings <laughs> make the sound through you. I mean, whatever you need to do, just feel it and let it be, right? Just release your emotions and let them go, right? And remember, when you let them go, where are you going? Where are you going to a higher consciousness? You're going to love. You're, go you're not just letting them go. You're actually transforming to a higher level, whether that be gratitude, compassion, love, joy, whatever, right? The next initiation from Alice Bailey is to transmute your emotions with the mind connected to spirit. So we're not just going into the head, we're actually going into a place where we transcend the emotions, right? So we actually, uh, or, or transmute, as I, as I talked about with compassion, you actually take anger and immediately change it to compassion by thinking what brought them to be the way they, they, they are, you know? <clears throat> I see them as a baby. Right? So you immediately transmute it. So again, you're not 
bypassing the emotion. You're meeting it and actually changing it to a higher energy. You could take a, a ang a anxiety and totally trans or fear and change that to love, just like that. Right? I remember I was almost in an accident last year and I just started shaking and I thought, this is useless. This fear is useless. So I started toning love immediately to calm my nervous system down. Right? It's very cool. So to change, transmute those emotions so you, you, and you do it consciously so you're not bypassing it. Right? Otherwise, again, it'll get you in the butt. It's just waiting for the right time to get you in the butt. Right. Okay, so this is what we do with psychotherapy as well. We actually, you know, hopefully instead of just making, just resonating uh, how you feel in that situation, which a lot of psychotherapy is about, then we actually do a transmutation uh, where you actually transcend it. And also it's really cool in um, uh, uh, hypnotherapy. So you actually imagine a flow where the emotion didn't happen or the trauma didn't happen, right? And so you imagine what it would be like without that trauma and your body doesn't know any difference. So it actually feels that. So to actually use your mind to transmute the emotion itself, right? So it never gets in. Very cool. Very cool. All right. The main thing is to not allow yourself to hurt yourself. Whenever you find that you are not feeling good, work with it to change it. You know, feel it for a bit if you want, right? But don't stay there. Change it, right? With any of these techniques, you're not meant to feel bad on this planet. The last, uh, uh, the next initiation, not last because there's many actually, from Alice Bailey is to go into spirit where you are living in the fifth dimension of love and light all the time, no duality, and you drop the emotional body. It's actually you don't get rid of the emotional body completely, you just don't identify with it. So now you are not your emotions at all, you are just pure love. That's really, it was the, 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 the uh, outward uh, expression of Christ on the cross, they say, is when he left the world behind. I am no longer of this world. Well, you are still of this world. You're of the spirit of this world, the soul of this world, and everybody's soul. So it's like you're not leaving the world. You're actually becoming more connected to every soul on, in, in the universe that you are a part of, right? So often they say, in a lot of the books, they say the ascended masters say that emotions are silly illusions but you got to be careful because you still got to feel them right or you're dead but you can transmute them you can do all these different aspects and go to a higher level so you're not in them you're not running the energy of that emotion you are just pure love and light where compassion is built in right hmm these are the different levels of looking at emotions on a path of ascension and going into higher and higher consciousness. Some people use this level to bypass emotions. You got to be careful. You know, we're not, it takes, it'll take a while before we're all at level five here, right? Because if you're not there all the time, you might need to still Feel it a bit and transform it, right? I know I do. I can't stay here all the time, but this is where we're headed. I know people that live here, right? And most of the time. <laughs> and it's really where we're headed, right? May we all be there sooner than later. I see, I don't think that's it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I want to do one last, oh, one last thing. I still want to share my screen here. Let's do the sound of joy. Okay. Before we do that, though, I want to say thank you 
for joining the conference here. I hope you enjoyed it and learned how to work with emotions for yourself and for others. It's really the intention so that we're no longer stressed out or happy or just wherever you are. And if you're not feeling good, you can shift it. So you're back connected to you, your own vibration, connected to earth and source. I hope that's my intention for you as we close here. Let's do joy. Think of the last time, or not last time, any time you were in a state of complete joy. Joy happens from relationships sometimes, from babies, children a lot, nature, animals, group experiences, a little missing that one lately, huh? Joy is from many places. Think of the uh, time when you were in complete joy. And go back to that time now and feel it completely. And then make the sound of it. <laughs> so your homework for the rest of your life is to feel more joy. Thank you so much and take care. This has been a presentation of New Earth One Network, your home for New Earth Living. Access information, education, and videos on living from the heart in unity consciousness. Visit newearthone.com.